I'm going to teach you how to implement a mixed music system to make your video game more immersive using FMOD as middleware software. We are going to look how to create vertical systems that not only are randomizable but also respond to in-game events. And then I'll show you how to glue these vertical slices together in a horizontal system so that they can seamlessly transition from one to another. Lastly, we are going to read in-game parameters to directly affect the intensity of your boss track based on the boss's health. Hi everyone, welcome to my Today I'm going to walk you through creating a mixed music system using FMOD. It is called mixed because it implements both horizontal and vertical arrays in order to make your tracks more dynamic. You can use this to add more variety to your soundtrack, thus reducing listening fatigue and also helping your player to be more immersed into your world and in your game. Ok, so we're going to start by opening a new FMOD session. As you can see it here, it is all blank. So the first thing we need to do is to create an event. We right click here on the left, new event, and this is going to be a new 2D timeline. Uh, 3D events can be specialized and you can position them in different parts of the space. But for this one, as it is a soundtrack and it's going to sit in the background, it's going to be a 2D timeline. We're going to call this music. As you can see, some things pop, it says unassigned, and also you have an audio track. It says unassigned because in order to integrate your music to your video game, you have to assign this to a sound bank. If you see here on the top left where it says events, then we have a tab that says bank, and we have a master bank. You can create different banks to load different audio files into your game, but in this case, as we just need the music, we're going to assign this music event to the master bank. So right click, and then we're going to assign to bank and to the master bank. And now it disappears. We need to add some music to it, right? So we're going to go to assets and we're going to create another folder and we're going to call it music as well. And now we're going to import our music. Something very important is to stay organized. I know this may be boring, but it is really important. As you can see here, I have my FMOD files, but I also have my music folder with all the tracks that I'm going to include in this game. In this game, you are climbing up a building, so you're going up floor and floor up. So that's why you have like the, the track that is going to be playing from floors 1 to 10 and then 10, 11 to 20 and so on. Then you have, when you get to the roof, you have the final boss. In between floors, you're going to be using a lift. You need some level change music. And also at the beginning of the game, you are outside, so we have an outdoors track. So if we to have a consistent naming system. In this case, I started with the name of the game on the left that says high rise under underscore the name of the track, in this case is floor 10, then underscore and then the layer. This is a vertical track that consists of four different layers that are composed to play at the same time. So this very top layer is the one in the base and then it is at 120 bits per minute and in 4-4 time signature. This is important information to have here, even though this particular soundtrack is composed at 120 BPM and 4-4 time signature, it is good practice to have this information here. Because when you are inside of mod, you want to stay in FMOD to, to do all your processes there. So you don't want to be checking your notes or checking your folder and your files to remember what BPM the track is on. So you put it on, in the name of the track and then you can see that inside of mod. The next one, it says L8M. So this is the length, that's the L there. This particular track is eight measures long. And then we have the last bit, which is a P. There's some confusion here. Some people use this as a pickup bar. A pickup bar is a bar that goes before the beginning of the piece. They call it also pre-entry. Some people use this part for post-exit. That means once your bar finished, sometimes you have a reverb tail or some notes that blend into the next track and you, you need to account for those. In this case, I made these tracks without them. They are seamless loop, so this piece here is, is neither pick up or post exit. This information is important because usually you are going to be looping this track. So if some of them have some music that comes before the actual loop, you need to take that into consideration for transitions. Same if they come as post exit content. So I've done all of this for all of the tracks, as you can see. So now I'm just going to drag and drop this into my folder music and they are imported then. So as I mentioned before, in this game you start outside, so let's go to the outdoors file. Over here we have two tracks, one says loop and the other says transition. This is why it's important to have the information here. You can see everything you need inside of mod. 
So the first thing we need is the loop. So we're going to see it's 120 BPM. So we need to tell FMOS that the track is going to be 120 and 44. So here it says logic tracks. We're going to right click and then we're going to add a tempo marker. Comes by default in 120 and 44. Now, this audio track is going to be the one we're going to be using for the outdoors music. So let's rename it and let's color code it because I love colors. So the first thing in the game, the first uh, track you listen to when you're exploring outside is this one here. So we just drag and drop it, put it in the end, let some quick color code. There you go. And this track is going to be looping all the time the player is outside. So here in the logic track again, right click and then we're going to add a loop region. We can rename it as well. You can do that with F2 as well. So we're going to call this outdoors. And now we need to fit it. How many track, how many bars, I'm sorry. It says six measures long. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. And now we're going to move it. So we have all the information we need visible. So this logic tracks, uh, the, it has different heights. We're not going to dip into that now, but it does have a hierarchy. That means that whatever is on tops has priority to everything that is below it. If you go to the region here below, we have the transition conditions. So it is looping, but when should it loop? So we're, we need to add a condition. So it's going to loop. We need a new parameter as we have none. And we're going to have a discrete parameter. We're going to call this parameter outdoors. The range is going to be from zero to one. This is just going to be on and off. So this is going to tell you if the player is going to be outside or inside. So we're going to start with the player outside. So it's going to start on one. As you can see here on the top ne next to the transport, we have outdoors and we can flick it zero and one. So we start at one and below in the region, in the transition conditions as well, we have this green bar. We need to make a decision here. We need to tell it when it is looping. If you see this white line on top of it, that means the current state of the parameter. And we said that the player starts outdoors. So when it's one, when it's outdoors, it's going to loop. And now it's going to loop. So we press the space bar to start and stop and it should loop now. change this parameter to zero, we should stop, well, we should transition to the right, but there's nothing there, so it's going to stop. Okay, so what's going to happen when the player goes in? He's going to start with the floors 1 to 10 that are here. To transition to that track, I compose this outdoors transition bit. So let's drag and drop it. Super quick color code. This is again six measures long, as you can see here. And now when the player is not outdoors, it's going to go to the right there. Okay, we want the player to be on floor one and listen to the first track. As you can see, it consists on four different layers. So this is the vertical slice I was talking about. So we're horizontally moving from the outdoor system to a transition just once. That's why we're not looping it and into a vertical system. For this, we need to add more tracks so we can manipulate them apart. So add audio track, so it's four of them. And we're going to rename it accordingly. I like to start with the drums, then the bass, then the melody. And lastly, the combat layer. And I'm going to color code. So what I want this to be is a randomizable track. So it has some elements that go away sometimes and sometimes play together with the rest. This is to add variety to the track. So the player doesn't listen to the same every single time. That way it prevents the player to have listening fatigue and helps them achieve more immersion. So we're going to do this by randomizing some of the layers. I want the drums to be playing all the time. So simple drag and drop. But then to add some randomization to the next tracks, we're going to add something that is called a multi-instrument. So we're going to right click here on the base one and it says add multi-instrument. We're going to place it and stretch it. Okay. And inside there, we're going to add our base. A multi-instrument can host different instruments in the same track. And then you can decide how 
or when to select each one of them. Below, here in the multi-instrument, you have the playlist and it says that it includes the bass track and it's playing 100%. We're going to add another instrument and it's going to be a silence instrument because what I want is for this track to be on or off. It says 50-50, but I want the bass to be present most of the time. So right click, set play percentage, and let's say that I want the bass to be there 90% of the time and automatically it will list the silent instrument at 10% of the time. Before we test it, let's go back to the logic track, right click and then add a loop region and let's fit it around it. Let's call it floor 10. Let's start playing it. There we have the bass and the drums. Again. Now the bass has gone. And we're going to be doing this for the melody as well. So right click, multi-instrument, color code it, and then we drag and drop our melody. An instrument, silent instrument, and I want the melody to be playing, let's say 70% of the time. So most of the time, but not all the time. And that way we have our vertical layer, or vertical system, I'm sorry. So every time we press play, we're going to have a variety of these conditions. <laughs> There you go. We are yet to place the combat music. This one is going to be in a single instrument, so let's just drag and drop it, color code it real quick. The system that we have just listened to, it's been the exploration music, right? So when you are exploring the floor you are in, but then whenever an enemy approaches you, we want to add this combat layer that makes the track more aggressive. Let's hear it. So it complements it, it just consists of a electric guitar with some distortion and then some cymbals on top. But we want to hear this only when enemies are approaching. So we need a new parameter. So let's go here next to the timeline, there is a plus sign, right click and then let's add a parameter sheet. We're going to do a new parameter and we're going to call this combat. It's going to be continuous in this case and we're going to have it from 0 to 1. It's going to start at 0 because the game is going to start in exploration. There's not going to be combat at the beginning. So we have the combat sheet there and then we have it on top. What we want to do is to adjust the volume of this track. Whenever an enemy approaches us, we're going to turn up the volume and whenever we defeat the enemies or walk away from them, we're going to turn the volume down. So here in the combat track, we have this knob here that's at zero decibels. We're going to right click and then we're going to add automation. And we have some automation here, but I like to change it in the combat sheet. Let's say that we want the track to be at, at full volume whenever an enemy is at 0.8 or above. Uh, by the way, you have to talk to your developer to see what parameter they are using to have the same unit. If they are using a variable that goes from 1 to 100, then you want to do this 1 to 100 or maybe add some scaling in game, but you have to communicate with them. Let's say it starts at 50 and then we drop this down all the way to negative infinity. So that way the volume, as you can see the knob here on the right, is silenced and then when the enemy is approaching us, we get the full volume. So let's test it. Uh, we can hide the automation here. And let's play it. So there's no enemy there. Okay, so it's working. Now, what we want to do is to be able to transition to the next floor. And as I mentioned, we're going to use some lifts. So we have our level change music and we have the level change one. So let's drag and drop it here. So we don't have many tracks. We're going to do this in the same outdoors one. So let's rename it actually to transitions. Quick color code. The player finishes exploring floor 10, then goes to the lift and gets this track. This track needs to be looping all the time that the player is in the lift. So right click, and loop region, and we're going to call, well, we're going to place it on top and then we're going to call this lift one. Again, these logic tracks have a hierarchy, but in this case, I'm just using this for visual purposes. Could as well be like this and 
Nothing happens in this particular case. And now we need to add some conditions. Once again, we need a new parameter. So this is going to be looping. And then let's go down here to the region and then add condition, parameter, browse, and then new parameter. This is going to be discrete. We're going to call this floor, meaning that if the player is on, on the floor or not. Zero and one, this is just going to be on and off and it's going to start at one. So we're going to assume that the player goes from outdoors to a floor and it's actually on the floor. So when it's not on the floor, it's going to be in the lift. That makes sense. When it is one, remember to adjust this bar down here, it's going to be looping. And then the player is going to be in the lift. We had a condition, but we're now using the same parameter, the floor. But now it's the opposite. When it's not on the floor, it's going to be looping. Let's give it a quick test. So the player is on floor, should loop. Now the player is not on the floor, so it should go to the lift. Okay. And it's looping, so it's working. Now we basically finished. We need to do this once again for the next floor 20 and then for floor 30. Uh, we're going to use the same parameter and so on. So let me do it very quick. And also in floor 20, we have one extra track. So I'm going to add that one as well. Okay, so there you go. Now we have all of our floor tracks that are randomizable. They have this combat layer that comes on and off whenever we have enemies close and we can move in one direction to the right from floor 10 to the lift, the next floor and so on. That's because this game doesn't allow backtracking. So you're always moving forward. So now the only thing we are missing is the final boss track. For this one, we have three different tracks, layer one, two and three. We're going to actually use new tracks. So let's do that. Boss layer one, boss layer two and boss layer three. We're going to color code them as well. Track, let's make them blue. Yeah, why not? Okay. So these ones are also 120 BPM, so we just drag and drop. Let's do the first bit, then the second one, and then the third one. Okay, so that loading screen is because it's compressing them. If you see here in the track, it is set to loop and to compress them. So because these are fairly long, as you can see, they are 24 measures. So that's why it took some time to compress them. By the way, just a quick parenthesis, if you see here in the final boss, they are set to stream. You can change this in the option. This means that this audio is going to stream from the files and no, it's not going to be loaded into memory. We usually want to stream background music and we want to load sound effects from memory, for example. That way you can have less delay and with the background music is not really important if there's some delay with it. Well. What we want from this soundtrack is something similar to the combat, but what we want to have is that the layer one is going to be looping all the time. So let's add this loop region. Uh, we're going to call it final boss. This is going to be looping when the player is on floor, so it has to get off the lift. So the condition is the same one, but we only want this layer to be from the beginning. So we need to silence these two. What we're going to do here is to read the boss's health and we're going to turn on the second layer whenever the boss is below, let's say, 60% of its health. And then we're going to turn on the third layer whenever the boss is 20% of its health. Let's rename this boss 50%, boss 20%, and let's call this 100%. So this is not going to be affected. So once again, we need a new parameter. So on top, we have the template, the combat, and let's add another parameter sheet, browse, and let's do a new parameter. Let's call this boss health. It's going to be continuous and let's do this zero to 100. And the initial value is going to be 100. So let's create it. And now what we want is to add automation to these two tracks. So if you remember, it's right click, add automation. So whenever health is below 50, we want to listen to the track. So it's kind of the opposite as we did before. So we place one here in the 50 and then let's do one here on 55. Put it just next to it so it has a nice fade in. We could put it right below it, but it's going to be a, a sudden burst of, of music and it won't be that good in this case. In other cases, it might work for sure, but in this particular soundtrack, not really. And let's do the same for the last one, auto automation. So this is going to be on 20, the zero, and then in 25, 
we start. And now let's test it. We are going to start with health 100. Let's start. <laughs> So just like that, we have our mixed music system using FMOS and this will help you to get a more dynamic soundtrack in your video game and help your player achieve immersion more easily. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I'll see you next time.